Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers released from neurons. These will then bind to receptors on the other cell that is being talked to and have some effect. So that's, this little video is gonna focus on the neurotransmitters themselves. You may have heard of some neurotransmitters such as serotonin or dopamine. Um, those are two that we're actually not gonna talk about, but I want you to be able to think about you know what serotonin maybe is in dopamine. Here are five other examples, and these are the ones that we'll be focusing on this semester in terms of the ones that will come up again with the autonomic nervous system. Um, yeah, so these are the five, and I'll introduce them all now, and we'll see them many more times over the semester. So the first one's acetylcholine, or ACH. We're gonna go through each the action and then the location in the body. So that would be either central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, sometimes autonomic nervous system, et cetera. So acetyl acetylcholine is mostly excitatory. We'll get to what that means in terms of what's happening at the membrane itself, but it is going to excite the neuron that it binds to um, the receptor on. It's a widespread neurotransmitter um, located throughout the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. We will see it mostly in the neuromuscular junctions, so where neurons talk to a muscle cell to cause them to contract, and that's always excitatory. Um, we'll also see it in the autonomic nervous system, ANS. All right, norepinephrine, this is mostly excitatory as well, and we'll see it in the autonomic nervous system. It's present some other places as well in the brain, central nervous system as well. I have a few chemicals shown here. The reason I have this here, you don't need to memorize these formulas, is just to kind of give you some idea of the size of these molecules. Um, they are, for example, smaller than proteins. Um, they're larger than atoms, larger than C C um, H2O. So kind of just give you some perspective of that and that will become relevant as we talk about them binding to a receptor, kind of just having a scale of that. So this one here is the formula of norepinephrine. Epinephrine is actually very similar in structure, and that's helpful for remembering that their functions are very similar as well. So we'll come back to both of these with the autonomic nervous system. Epinephrine is also mostly excitatory, also in the autonomic nervous system, so similar to norepinephrine. There will be some differences as well, we'll get back to with what epinephrine can do. Okay, glutamate, you may have heard of. It's excitatory, it's the most common excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Um, so when, when you kind of think of excitation in the central nervous system, often it's glutamate. Contrary to that, kind of the opposing neurotransmitter is GABA, it's inhibitory. So these two are kind of work in opposition to each other, excitatory and inhibitory. And again, we'll talk about what that means in terms of what these are doing to be excitatory when this molecule binds to the receptor. Okay, so that's an introduction, introduction to these chemical messengers that are neurotransmitters. We'll talk about receptors separately. And the other thing I wanna talk about with neurotransmitters is their termination of their signals. So we've talked about release of neurotransmitters from a synapse. So the presynaptic membrane, I'll just go to this image here. So this is what happens, the synaptic vesicles are in the presynaptic cell and they're released when, when an action potential comes along and triggers their release, that calcium dependent vesicle release that happens here. So neurotransmitters release into the synaptic cleft and binds to receptors on the postsynaptic cell. This will come back to the detail in the next video. However, what I want to talk about here is how these are broken down. Neurotransmitter signals need to be removed from the synaptic cleft to stop binding to the receptor. And this can happen three different ways. One, neurotransmitter can be returned to the axon terminals. That's number one here. This is called reuptake. And you may have heard of SSRIs, serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Those act by inhibiting this process. So there's more serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter, in that cleft. So reuptake is one way you can stop the signal. Notice glial cells can also uptake. Um, you can have enzymes that break down neurotransmitters 
by a chemical reaction. Um, or you can have just diffusion away. So diffusion away, taken up into blood vessels or glial cells.